Now, we do have tangential narrators, uh, narrators in literature such as uh, Ishmael and Moby Dick or Nick in Great Gatsby, but and the goodness in James' story and James' novella is equally tangential, but the problem is not that the goodness is a tangential narrator. Rather, the problem is that this narrator is not someone who comes across as a reliable narrator. Now, what exactly is a reliable narrator? Now, uh, if you look at narrators or the narrative technique in, in story, the earlier stories spoke about had this omniscient narrators. I'm a narrator, a narrator who is akin to God, who had control over all the incidents that were happening and understood what was happening and why it was happening and also foretold certain things. They would even tell the reader, address the reader, speak about various events. And this, from this omniscient narrator who was controlling the narrative in turn of the screw, we come across someone who is an unreliable narrator. Now, why is the governess unreliable? The governess is unreliable uh, because what she speaks of or what she narrates are events which are not collaborated by anyone else. These are things that she sees and then there are actions that are happening which uh, we are not really sure as a reader whether to believe or not. There's a question of belief here. Secondly, or in, along with belief is also a question of faith again. We no longer trust the narrator. There is no blinding, uh, blind trust in the narrator saying that this is what the narrator is doing and, uh, and this is what she is telling her so we have to automatically believe her because the, the writer had incorporated certain elements in the story which go against what the narrator is actually saying making the reader question whether the narrator has ample grasp of events or whether the narrator is willfully misleading the reader. I'm not really sure that the goddess is actually misleading us, misleading the readers, but she does not seem to have a proper understanding is something that we have to think about because if she is hallucinating, naturally she does not understand. The other reason why we start wondering as to what exactly uh, the governess is feeling and speaking about is because she comes across as nervous. However, when we say that she is, she comes across as someone who is being nervous and there is this uh, sentence structures that she uses, the dialogues that she uses, the language that she uses, which shows a certain kind of frenzy, we have to remember that uh, she does not necessarily have to be a mad woman to actually speak as if she's in a frenzy. If she had actually seen a ghost naturally, that would have challenged the way that she would perceive the world. The world no longer would seem come across to her as something that's logical, something that's rational or something that's natural so that the language structure that she had been used to or the language that she had been using prior to this is something that she finds is... Uh, does not really um, satisfy the kind of emotions that seeing a ghost might have roused in her. She would be looking at these things and when she's trying to express herself, her language structure would naturally falter. There it would not be like she can automatically use the same language structure when she is narrating something, when she is horrified in contrast to what she would be doing if she is um, she is speaking about normal mundane events. Remember, seeing a ghost is not a mundane event. Now, <coughs> what um, James does with this, with this understanding of um, not uh, coming up with a tangential narrator who is probably unreliable, is that he is in one sense leading to the kind of narrative techniques that we find in the 20th century the reporter style technique that we speak of now the reporter style technique as to what are the things that we are seeing and the limited perspectives that come along with it whether it is in Dashiell Hammett or Ernest Hemingway the kind of narratives that we that we are moving towards from your omniscient narratives is also as a narrative that um, is also a structure that he is using uh, along with um, the unreliable narrator the structure that he's using is also 
playing with the set and structure that is by and large used in science fiction fiction mainly by Wilkie Collins where we are looking at someone else manuscript that is that is being um, uh, re, uh, used here uh, various notes various things that have been noted down in various books and how it it is viewed as a manuscript and this manuscript of or detailing of various events or taken as evidence of certain events happening in one sense what james is doing is going uh, using the techniques of the sensation novel which tend to project the sensation novel as realist novel and by trying tending to use that he's also questioning the very uh, basis of what is real in the realist novel because the events that he is describing in the in this novel while they come across in a realist manner the problem that we have with the realism that is being depicted here as the governess does uh, in the story are not about what is gen what is perceived as normative now what do we mean by that when we say that i mean the realist novel deals with normative and privileges a particular narrator who is going to actually describe the na- the normative that's what happens in your realist novel so that um, if this is what happens in your realist novel uh, james story james novella you have governess who is privileged but is she normal becomes a question that the reader is forced to ask is she describing events which are normal is it the second question that the reader is forced to ask and when we as we are not really sure as to whether these events that she is depicting are normal or about go or certain hallucinations that she is having or ghostly ghosts that she is actually seeing either of them as they are not really a part of the normal or part of the normative you are saying that this then challenges your the very foundations of what you term as the realist novel thirdly along with uh, doing all this what um, james does in the story um, is by challenging these various traditions that are already present and making it uh, using ambiguity generally in the story what he is doing here is he is speaking about uh, or he is addressing a certain concern at the turn of the century that's what james is doing he is speaking about uh, this this period that uh, turn of the screw comes as if as as if it's a work as a, as a work which which falls into this age of transition from victorian to the 20th century to from victorian era to to modernism now what do we mean by this transition that we see this was a period where we see a conflict between science and the supernatural in other words uh, if science that is guided by reason that is guided by logic but that is guided by Uh, strong uh, empirical evidence that we speak of this is in conflict with faith the supernatural the superstitions or or supernatural and faith that it, that it's in conflict with how do you come up with a compromise between these two is it possible to come up with a compromise there are other stories which actually address this for instance such as thomas hardy's uh, the withered arm but what we see james do here in this is he does not come up with a compromise he does not tell us as to how we can actually um, accept the supernatural as well as science as part of the same narrative structure he is asking the reader to choose the choice is left to the reader and for that reason the story comes across as extremely disturbing even in the 21st century when we are reading it because whichever choice that we come up with whichever choice that we are coming up with we do not really have ample evidence to negate the other possibilities that the story includes and in, if we say for instance that this is a ghost story that i have faith that i believe in it now in that sense i am automatically discounting the housekeeper the housekeeper comes across as a liar or that we are saying that because it's a ghost the ghost chooses who it can appear to and who it can disappear or uh, so that we are giving them a, a more parts and it becomes even more disturbing because 
it would suggest that the ghost would not die that easily the ghost would not be exorcised that easily so that they're still walking on this earth in one sense which is it's of course frightening so in acceptance that i have faith and i accept that it's a ghost story is frightening the other part if i say that no it's not a ghost story it's about just this mad woman and her hallucinations there are these notions that it is about sex, uh, sexual repression that the governors faced that critics come up with and there's ample reason for them because uh, it's not just about uh, her seeing ghosts but even her assumptions that Quint had in some way corrupted Miles and Jessel had corrupted Flora the, the, the points that the governess comes up with so make us think that she she believes that some kind of child abuse, some kind of child sexual abuse had probably taken place and the sentence sentences where um, Miles actually says I want to be with my kind I want to be there I am I want to go off I'm old enough and so on and so forth that that Miles is saying which either can be seen as possession or which see show a boy a 10 year old boy who is probably corrupted to the point that he wants to indulge in his whatever fantasies whatever things that he had learned and we don't even know why he has come uh, he has been banished now each of these when we are seeing uh, which becomes a problem for the reader when they are read, looking at the story uh, this notion that the lady is sexually repressed because these are things that are being conveyed to the reader through the governess and the governess way of interpreting these sentences becomes significant for us the governess with her own prudish sense as to what the and her inferences that she draws from these these sentences that the boy comes up with uh, are, are the reasons why we start having problems however james did give us a clue earlier in the novel when he shows the kind of novels that the governess had read the governess having read that kind of sensation melodramas uh, would necessarily look at certain sentences that the boy comes up with which could naturally be pretty innocent remember when the boy says i want to be with my kind it's just that a young boy who wants to play with other boys because remember this is an estate where there are hardly any males there are no males he is basically has to play with his younger sister with the governors with the housekeeper so in that sense he might be bored <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily make him someone who is corrupt or someone who is um, who is corrupt to the point that he he is trying to um, <coughs> trying to indulge in various fantasies or, or or corrupt other young children at school and he could have been banished just for playing tron for basically being really not mischievous at school we don't really know what had happened there and James by, by use of this ambiguity comes up with what is really disturbing about the story what is disturbing about the story is how much how corrupt our minds are how much we read into the story what we read into the story and by by uh, by that I mean that if we read into the story there are ghosts there are ghosts in our mind when we read sexual abuse in the story, there is sexual abuse in our mind. These are things that we are actually reading into the story rather than actually reading something using um, using it as, as just entertainment as it was supposed to be in the uh, in the narrative that Douglas comes up with. Douglas says that I'll tell you something really dreadful. But remember this as for Douglas and for those guests at the beginning of the story and James very clearly uh, cleverly does not really tell us what happens but when he says that this is these are stories for entertainment that they're telling it's almost in a in a jocular mode and they're joking about it they're speaking about it. and while they're enjoying themselves it comes up with this tale now the point here is this 
aspect of the story is completely forgotten as we keep on reading the governor into the governor's narrative and critics generally by reading into the governor's narrative and and trying to figure out whether she is mad whether she is um, whether she had seen ghosts or whether uh, she, the ch- children had experienced sexual abuse or any of these disturbing questions that the critics start asking keep forgetting that this is an after dinner story that is being narrated in other words a story that is told for entertainment the fact that uh, when we remember this particular fact about the story that this is told that told for entertainment makes us think of course can be far really disturbing because if someone thinks that such a dreadful story can be entertaining that's dreadful enough people who indulge in ghost stories as a as hmm, as entertainment are for james or someone who's interested in the grotesque and the dreadful two things that that he's saying but furthermore along with this understanding of what is dreadful what is grotesque what is really horrifying in the story is this leaves a lot to the reader's imagination depending on when the story when you are reading the story depending on your knowledge of the kind of art of the world that you come from the story then changes in the sense it the story becomes um, an inspiration for many future stories which basically do the same thing such as uh, stephen king's shining for instance which follows the same pattern or peter straub's shadowlands which which followed a set next in the same pattern so you're looking at Uh, stories which were written close to 100 years later after the story of the James Novella uh, who are following this now why are they doing this they are doing this because this ambiguity regarding how we actually think of god we think of what is horror of we think of what is faith these are questions that do not have easy answers what uh is dreadful my change with each is what we term as something that is really horrifying my change with each is but there is always a point where you have you are looking at faith and faith not just in ghost but in in god in christ in as um, as in the story which could be used to uh contest this but in a world that is losing this faith as james is right was writing a world that was moving towards disillusionment it's a world that had more faith in ghosts and more uh, belief in the kind of horror that man can actually wreak on another rather than in the in belief of a savior god or belief in a, in a story as something that's pure entertainment and that for one reason made this story come across as far more disturbing to critics and readers alike and th- with each passing age this is a story that um, which resonates when we actually look at it in in the literary history we see similar things that happen for instance in Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca when she actually goes back to Mendeley and she says that this is a place i went to and then there is this earlier the uh, the earlier wife who seemed to be roaming around that's one of the things that she is troubled by <laughs> now uh, this is a story that also for instance mm, <coughs> show how as in the present era uh, also show the kind of problems that we have faced in 20th century ghost stories after um, henry james story where ghost stories have moved to be situated in in cities in urban spaces but even when they are situated in urban spaces by and large these are urban spaces which are desolate or else uh, even when they are situ- by and large not situated in urban spaces and even when they are situated in urban spaces they are spaces which are desolate which are uh, again make the narrator the person who faces the ghost as someone who is who finds themselves in a strange world otherwise you are speaking about stories which then um, try to come up um, 
come with a this uneasy balance between what is uncanny and what is probable what is improbable now for, for instance blatt is exorcist which tries to do the something similar now the if this is how your uh, the 20th century ghost stories have changed to the few ghost stories the very few ghost stories which are really situated in urban spaces such as stephen king's it for instance still speak about ghosts not so much as or or the demons that uh, that become uh, a representative of the nightmarish city or the underbelly of the city from which keep crawling up uh, and in king's story but these stories by trying to give them uh, a particular a tangible feel do not really result in the same kind of disturbing worlds that henry james had done henry james story the kind of disturb uh, disturbance that is that it creates in our minds is is it also is necessary because it then makes readers uh, it made readers mainly at the turn of the century and the end of the 19th century question their understanding of faith their understanding of the world they find themselves in it also made them aware of certain things that had been marginalized for a long time certain acts that have been marginalized for a long time such as uh, jessel and quint losing their jobs for having a relationship where and mainly because quint had a relationship with someone who belonged to a different class the class structure that is being that james hints at here his again the kind of corruption of the child if it happened again these are questions that the readers are forced to confront suggesting that i mean your uh, marginalized issues of victor nera are in one sense raked up by by henry james and turner screw and that actually becomes the turner screw and because that actually makes something far more dreadful because you are not really talking about problems in some other world but in the here and now the problems in the here and now where you have a class system you have a world in which child abuse is happening these are this is a world in which um, you are allowing a mad woman to take care of your children without realizing what is happening this is far more disturbing and that i think is what James had said and doing here. Thank you.